Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So today I'm gonna to be telling you about what I recommend as the top 10 Ruby books. So if you're looking for top 10 Ruby books, you found it here and I'm gonna give you my recommendation. Now these are not in any order. I am not a, what I would consider a Rubyist. So I do not spend my days coding in Ruby, but I am familiar with Ruby. I've talked to enough Ruby developers and I spend enough time around developers in general that recommend Ruby and recommend books to me that I've been able to put together a list of what I've heard from most of the most experienced Ruby developers that I've talked to, what are their top 10 books and so that's the list I'm going to give you today. And this, this list is in no particular order, of course, but you may, you may find that some of the books near the front are your favorite books. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. I, I'm, going to, I'm going to start actually with a, a book that is written by someone who I highly respect in the software development community uh, because he's just an awesome guy and he does some pretty, pretty cool stuff. And he wrote a book called Beginning Ruby. This is Peter Cooper. So you can check out Beginning Ruby. That's my number one book here. And this is a great book for beginners. It's tutorial based, which is really good. Has a lot of projects and a testing framework built into it. So it really takes you through the process of learning Ruby by actually doing stuff and actually building real stuff. Sometimes programming language books can be very referential where it's just a reference manual or they're giving you little snippets and they're not really guiding you through a practice of actually building something. So building actual tutorials makes a lot of sense. So that's a really good book, been recommended by a lot of people. Again, Beginning Ruby by Peter Cooper. Next up, we have A Well-Grounded Rubyist by David Black. So uh, this, this is more of an in-depth book. You can check out the book here. And this book is gonna give you more of a deep knowledge of Ruby, maybe not as much of a book for a beginner, although certainly a beginner could utilize this book, but this is gonna go way deeper into, into Ruby knowledge. You know, if, you, if you're the kind of person that likes to really, really dig in deep, that's, that's kind of me, right? <laughs> so if I'm, I'm getting a book, I'm gonna get one of the, the deeper knowledge type of things, but it might not be so good if you're just starting out. You don't wanna start with something else, like beginning Ruby, like I mentioned, and then go here. But Well-Grounded Rubyist uh, is, is definitely a highly recommended book for serious Ruby developers. Then I've got here Programming Ruby, 1.9 and 2.0, The Pragmatic Programmer's Guide. So this one is another deeper book, but it, it delves really into the why and the how, which is really important, I think, and it talks about object-oriented programming a lot. So if you really like to understand why you're doing things, sometimes some people learn better that way. I find that we, we generally have a better understanding of something, or we better we learn something better when we have an understanding, I, I, would, I would say it that way. So if you want to really curious about why we do something like this in Ruby, or how to to, to how it's implemented and things like that. This book is gonna be, be beneficial to you, so check that one out. Again, it's Programming Ruby 1.9 and 2.0, The Pragmatic Programmer's Guide. Then we have the Ruby Cookbook, which you can check out here. I Usually on these top 10 book lists, I recommend the cookbook books, and there, there's a, a certain reason why. Well, especially in this one, this one in particular, it has a lot of idiomatic Ruby code. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is that it's like, how, how should you generally do something, right? So one of the problems with learning a programming language is that you, if you don't have guidance on how you should write in that programming language, if you don't have someone teaching you the idiomatic, I love that word, but the idiomatic way to write a programming language, to write in that programming language, you, you sort of invent your own, and it, it might not be readable, you may be reinventing the wheel a lot, so, by by having a cookbook and this this uh, Ruby cookbook, you, what you do is you have some recipes, you have some ways of solving common problems, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel so much. So this is one of those books, like almost every programming language, you should get the cookbook version of the you know that O'Reilly puts out in general because it's just going to give you like some shortcuts for like common stuff, so that you don't have to reinvent all that stuff yourself. Because there's a lot of kind of boilerplate 
stuff that, that you're gonna do in that programming language. And, and when you look at the cookbook books, usually you get the idiomatic type of, of, of writing, of, of how to write that code. So I, I definitely recommend that one. Next up, we have Effective Ruby. Uh, this is another kind of one of those books that I like. I, I, I did a review, I talked about if you look at the top 10 C++ books, I spent a lot of time talking about effective C++ because effective C++, that was the kind of the first of these, these effective series books. It really, really, like that format is, is so good. And, and the Ruby one, from what I've read and what I've understood and what people have recommended is, is also very good in that what it does is it takes common problems and it sort of solves them and, and has you delve deep into them, right? So that's one of the, the advantages, this effective, series of books really usually takes you know this problem okay this is the how this is the why this is what what we do it this way and it sort of gives you again a deep understanding of the programming language and not just like how to solve the problem but why and what and also some of the pitfalls like oh we could try to do this but then we'd run into this problem and when you start to see enough of those scenarios it can really help you to become more of an experienced developer where it's not just because writing code is not just writing code right what, what writing code becoming a good developer is about seeing kind of the patterns and the problems and being able to solve those and say oh well okay this is why we do things this way rather than just you know being a cargo cult programmer and just saying okay well we just always write unit tests or we just always use dependency injection or we use objects but if if you don't understand why, then you, you, you can't adapt, and and you're you're it's a very shallow type of knowledge. So it's it's definitely important. That's why I like those effective series of books. Next, we have metaprogramming Ruby two program like the Ruby Pros. Okay, so this is kind of cool. This is this book again, a little bit more of an advanced book, but metaprogramming. So Ruby is is kind of unique, or well, not so much anymore. But when it when it was first coming out and being popular, it was unique in that you could you could sort of redefine the the, the language itself almost, right? You can redefine some of the native libraries. You can rebind things. You can do things like duct typing. Again, if if that's losing you, if you're a beginner, that's okay. But just under, understand this that. You can you can sort of meta right meta the word meta means to is is like a higher level of abstraction so like if I were if I'm meta doing video on if I'm doing a video on doing videos on YouTube that'd be a meta video right okay so the thing about meta programming is sort of like programming programming right it's it's sort of that higher level of abstraction and you can do a lot of that in Ruby and that's sort of a useful tool so again as a beginner you probably don't want to focus on that in any programming language but eventually you want to be able to change the the the, the structure itself you want to be able to program at the higher level and that's that's where this comes into play so a lot of the really really cool stuff that you can do involves metaprogramming. And so I'd, I would definitely check out that book. Again, not necessarily for a beginner, but metaprogramming Ruby 2 program like the Ruby Pros, it's, it's one of the, the better books on that. Next we have Eloquent Ruby. You can check the, out that book here. Now Eloquent Ruby is, it, it is a book that is focused on Ruby on Rails. So Ruby on Rails is a popular web development framework for Ruby, and it's sort. Of, this is sort of an intermediate book. I would definitely recommend this if you're going to do web development, especially Ruby on Rails in in Ruby. This is one of the the highest recommended books that I've I've received recommendations for on Ruby on Ruby on Rails, and it it teaches you how to write good clean code. I think that's one of the things that's definitely apparent in this book, and that's why it's called Eloquent Ruby, is that it really is sort of that uh, kind of a beautiful way of writing, writing the code. And a lot of Rubyists, honestly, the, one of the things to know about Ruby is that they take pride in the beauty of their code, and it's, it's because you can express things in an eloquent way in Ruby, so Eloquent Ruby. Next, we have Clean Ruby. Ru clean Ruby. <laughs> so you can check out Clean Ruby here. Clean Ruby, again, another one of those books that is is sort of on the eloquent side of it right writing clean code in Ruby this is really important again as you be, start to improve as a Ruby developer as a developer in general you want to make sure that your code is readable as possible and so writing good clean and manageable code is really 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 important so this is one of those books where again after a beginner you might want to step up to 
clean Ruby or even you know very, very shortly after learning Ruby so that you can learn how to write the idiomatic Ruby code that's going to be clean that's going to be maintainable it talks about a lot of the ways to maintain your Ruby code which is, is really going to be important because as as you may know as a software developer you're going to spend the majority of your time maintaining your code or other people's code it's not going to be writing a new code a lot of new programmers don't realize that, so this is, is really important to focus on. Next, we have Agile Web Development with Rails 5.0. This is a beginner book, okay, but it's up to date. So it's a, it's a new book with Rails 5, and it's, it's, again, beginner book starting from the beginning. It's a big book, but it's going to teach you Ruby and Ruby on Rails. So if you're looking at web development, if you kind of want one book that has it all in there that's gonna be up to date, this is probably the book that you want and it's gonna, it's gonna take you through becoming a Ruby on Rails developer with the, the latest version of the Rails framework. Next, Learn Ruby the Hard Way. This is another series of books that, that I like, Learn, Learn Ruby the Hard Way, the Hard Way series of books. I'll, I'll probably mention this in, in a lot of my top 10 book reviews here, but. Essentially, this book is focused, like the hard way book is focused on writing the code first and on learning by writing code by solving the problems. And then instead of instead of getting a lot of information and then applying it, you're, you're immediately applying it and then you're back, you're backing up from that. So that's why it's called the hard way. This is another one of those hard way books. Really good. I believe it's free online. Most of the hard way books are free online and then you can buy. I would I'd recommend buying a version, though. I mean, you know, the HTML version. Sure. It's free online, but you should just buy the book. Damn it! <laughs> All right, so learn Ruby the hard way. Uh, <clears throat> so, and, and that's and that's and you go through each exercise there, and, and that's and you type in the sample exactly how it is, and you make it run, and that's that's kind of the idea right there. So that's it. That's that's my top ten Ruby books. Again, I am not a Rubyist myself, but I do know Rubyists, <laughs> and uh, and and a lot of people have recommended these books over and over again. That's why I put together this book list, and it's it's a bunch of different you know, levels from beginner to intermediate to advanced. If you like this video, if you want to get more of these videos, I've, I've got two things to tell you, first of all. First of all, click that subscribe button. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button below and you'll get all, all the videos that, that I do here. And if you've been watching me and you're like, man, that shirt is just awesome, John. Well, click me and you can get one of your own Trust the Process Simple Programmer shirts. It, it reminds you that it's it's not the results that matter, it's the process. So it's, it's a good reminder. I love to be reminded of the fact that I need to stop focusing on the results. I need to just trust the process and do what I'm supposed to do. If you're trying to learn to become a programmer, this is something that you need to hear every day. It's like you need to realize that just like you, you know what you got to do, you just trust the process and believe me, one day it's going to click and, you, and you're going to get there. All right, if you like this video again, click that subscribe button and I will talk to you next time. Take care.